Throughout the Star Wars saga, Palpatine has proven himself to be a master strategist, able to manipulate events and individuals to achieve his goals. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the times Palpatine outplayed everyone and turned events in his favor. Let's begin. Starting with Palpatine masterfully becoming the Chancellor of the Republic. As a senator, he worked secretly with the Separatist Trade Federation Viceroy Newt Gunray to create a trade blockade around Naboo. Although the plan didn't go exactly as Palpatine wanted, he was still able to use the resulting political crisis to undermine the Senate's confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. Palpatine then manipulated the young and naive Queen Padme Amidala into believing that the Republic needed a new Chancellor, one who was stronger and more capable. As a result, Padme felt for Palpatine's words and called for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum, creating an opportunity for Palpatine to take part in the new election, eventually succeeding and becoming the new Supreme Chancellor of the Republic. In the years leading up to the Clone Wars, Palpatine secretly orchestrated the creation of a separatist movement that called for secession from the Republic and was led by former Jedi Count Dooku. Palpatine instructed Dooku to gather numerous planet systems which would declare their independence from the Galactic Republic and join the Confederacy of Independent Systems. During a time when Senator Amidala had to go into hiding because of Palpatine's attempts on her life, Senator Jaja Binks stepped in to temporarily take on her duties. However, the situation soon became more dire as the separatist movement began to build up a powerful droid army. Despite this, the Republic Senate was not yet prepared to approve the creation of their own army to counter the threat. As Palpatine's right-hand man, Mas Amida suggested that only a respected leader like Senator Amidala could persuade the Senate to act and give Palpatine emergency powers to form a Republic army. Jar Jar, trusting Amida's words, urged the Senate to grant Palpatine emergency powers to counter the increasing threat of the Separatists. The war has eventually begun, with Palpatine controlling both. Sides. During the Clone Wars, the intergalactic banking clan was one of the most powerful financial institutions in the galaxy and played a crucial role in funding both the Republic and the Separatist. Palpatine has always realized the strategic importance of controlling the banks and has begun to plot their takeover. The banking clan was on the brink of bankruptcy as the Clone Wars drew to a close, partly because of their affiliation with the Separatists. The Separatists had borrowed money from the banking clan but were unable to repay the loans and the interest due to concerns about corruption within the banking clan. However, much of this corruption was actually in favor of the separatists, with the clan allowing them to withdraw money without interest. Despite this, Count Dooku took action to overthrow the ruling council of the banking clan by pushing a new guy, Raj Clovis, into control. In return for his favor, Dooku forced Clovis to raise interest rates on Republic loans. As Clovis assumed power on the planet Scipio, Dooku arrived and the separatist blockade began, which was framed as as a Clovis-endorsed takeover. The Republic then launched an invasion of Scipio and pushed the Separatists off the planet. The banks were placed under the control of the office of the Supreme Chancellor. Through this, he was able to gain control over the allocation of resources and effectively control the galaxy's economy, laying the foundation for his eventual rise to power. One of Palpatine's most significant victories came with Order 66. This was an order identifying all Jedi as traitors and therefore subject to execution by the Grand Army of the Republic. There's probably not much point in talking about Order 66 again. To put it briefly, the brilliance of Palpatine's scheme was that he was able to create a ticking bomb right under the Jedi's noses, without their knowledge. As we all know, this bomb exploded on Palpatine's orders, getting him rid of the opposition in the form of the Jedi Order. More interestingly, in my opinion, is to remember how close the Jedi Order was to uncovering this plan. But thanks to Palpatine's genius, they never found out. In the Clone Wars series, one of the clones named Tup accidentally killed a Jedi prematurely. This raised concerns for the Republic and the Jedi, so the large investigation began. The Kaminoans were aware of the Sith Grand Plan, they studied Tup and claimed that a virus had caused him to kill his Jedi General. Clone Trooper Fives doubted their claims and discovered a chip inside Tup's head. With some help from the Kaminoan medical droid AZ-3, Fives discovered the presence of chips in every other clone, including himself. The Jedi have learned about the inhibitor chips, which, according to the Kaminoans, were necessary to make the clones more obedient and that a virus caused the chip to malfunction. Fives was taken to Coruscant for further examination. 
the Kaminoan scientists dragged Fives into a state of paranoia and aggression on their way to Coruscant. Upon arrival, Fives met with Palpatine and apparently learned about the Chancellor's involvement in the plot. Then Palpatine arranged everything in such a way that it seemed as if Fives had gone mad without his chip and had attacked him. This caused the Jedi and other clones to pursue Fives. Despite knowing the truth, the clone was unable to convince Anakin Skywalker or clone Captain Rex about the conspiracy and the Chancellor's involvement. Unfortunately, Fives was killed by his clone brothers before he could expose the truth. The Jedi Order accepted the explanation that a virus was responsible for the behavior of Tup and Fives and that the chips were necessary to maintain the clone's mental stability. To end the investigation, Palpatine ordered every clone to be vaccinated against a random virus. The chips were activated before the Jedi could learn the ultimate truth. However, when Order 66 was issued, Captain Rex managed to realize the connection and direct Ahsoka Tano towards Republic Archive data and the message he had recorded by saying, find Fives. Although Palpatine's plan succeeded, Fives' sacrifice eventually saved Rex and Ahsoka. Palpatine began grooming Anakin Skywalker as his apprentice by exploiting his fears and insecurities. After Palpatine recognized Anakin's immense power in the Force, he gradually became a close friend and a father figure for him. Throughout their interactions, Palpatine continually praised and flattered Anakin, making him feel special and valued. He also encouraged Anakin to keep secrets from the Jedi Council, further isolating him from his peers and superiors. Palpatine manipulated Anakin by presenting the Jedi Order as corrupt and power-hungry. After Anakin's mother died and Anakin, fueled by his anger, massacred the Sand People on Tatooine, Palpatine was the only one who learned about this firsthand from Anakin. As the Clone Wars progressed, Palpatine used the chaos of the conflict to further manipulate Anakin and deepen his loyalty to him. When Anakin became obsessed with the fear of losing his wife Padme, Palpatine hinted that there was a way to cheat death, discovered by the Sith Lord Darth Plagueis. Palpatine gradually revealed more and more of his true intentions to Anakin until he was fully committed to the Sith and willing to do anything to learn the way to save his loved one from death. Palpatine eventually groomed the Jedi Order's most gifted and powerful member to be his new apprentice, Darth Vader. In the eighth episode of The Bad Batch, we witnessed Palpatine tricking the Senate once again. The Empire portrayed the destruction of Kaminoan cloning facilities as a natural disaster. The Emperor's plan was to amass a huge army of conscripted soldiers instead of clone troopers. With the Kaminoan facilities destroyed, it was very easy for Palpatine to persuade the Senate that a new army was needed. Thus, the Emperor introduced the Imperial Defense Recruitment Bill, which aimed to replace the clone troopers with conscripted soldiers. However, the vote was postponed due to Emperor Palpatine's absence from the initial hearings and opposition from some senators including Ryo Chuchi and Bail Organa. During the final voting session, it was revealed that Admiral Rampart, who proposed the bill following Palpatine's orders, had embezzled Imperial funds intended for the Kaminoan facilities to support this bill. This revelation led to Senator Chuchi demanding an investigation into the missing funds, which further threatened the bill's passage. With the help of the Bad Batch, Senator discovered the command log from Admiral Rampart's Venator, which proved that his own ships destroyed the clone facilities. She played the recording of Rampart's Venator's bombarding Tipoka City, causing the Senators to react with shock and outrage. Palpatine always had a backup plan. The Emperor appeared during the session and addressed the Senate. Palpatine thanked the Senator for exposing the rogue element within the Empire and stated that the fact that clones were able to blindly follow orders and bombarded their own home without hesitation was terrifying. He tricked the Senate into believing that a conscript army would be safer for society, leading to the Bill's passage. Palpatine was really one of a kind, able to manipulate events to his advantage and outplay everyone around him. From becoming the Chancellor of the Republic to orchestrating the Clone Wars and gaining control over the banks, Palpatine's plans were always one step ahead. And with Order 66, he was able to wipe out the Jedi Order, cementing his power as the Galactic Emperor. Let me know in the comments which of Palpatine's schemes impressed you the most, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Star Wars content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!